So in today's video, I'm going to be making a praline accord. And why am I doing that? Because you guys keep asking me in the comments to make a praline accord. So I thought we're going to do what the people want. We're going to give the people what they want. And I'm going to give them a praline accord. So if you're interested in making your own praline accord, then watch this video. You'll see my process for making the accord. And you also have some nice formulas at the end of the video. So then, firstly, what is praline? Well, that's a good question. I didn't actually know fully myself what praline was, so I did a little bit of research on the internet. And I found out that it's a French sweet treat made in the 1600s, apparently, originally. And what it essentially is, is when you take caramel and mix them with nuts. Now, traditionally, it was caramel and almonds. So you mix almonds into caramel and then you let them set and those are your little pralines and then you eat them very tasty. Now apparently what happened is these also went to America in the 1700s and because they didn't have many almonds there they started making them with pecans and nowadays people add a lot of other things like chocolate so the term praline is actually quite broad. Nowadays it really covers quite a big range of confectionery. So we're going to be focusing on the original French pralines and then at the end of the video I'm going to be giving you some ideas on how you may kind of bend this to make some other types of pralines if you so desire. So the first step, and if you know me you'll probably have expected this, is to take out Jean-Claude Alain's book and see what he has to say about the topic, if anything. Now sadly he doesn't have anything about pralines, but what he does have is probably the second best thing, which is sugared almonds. So he says to create sugared almonds, what you essentially want to do is mix vanillin, benzoin, and benzaldehyde. Vanillin, essentially the canonical aroma chemical for vanilla. If you want a vanilla smell in a perfume, this is your first port of call. Benzaldehyde is a very strong aroma chemical which smells like almonds and cherries. So if you're trying to make either of those two notes, then benzaldehyde is a great one to use. And then benzoin is actually a resin which comes from a tree and it smells very sweet and vanillic. So it's almost like you could think of it as a very complex, um, more exotic, rich version of vanilla. It's not actually related to vanilla at all, but it's a very similar scent profile and it actually contains a lot of vanilla naturally. So I've got these here and this is actually what I did when creating this accord. I went and took these raw materials out and Ben's out of heart, I don't have a nice label for it yet. I got these raw materials and what we're going to do is we're going to go smell them firstly on the scent strips alone. And the reason to do that is because we want to see if these raw materials go nicely with each other and they actually smell like what, well, the accord that we want them without going through all the trouble of making a blend. So if I hold all of these three up together, well, it does smell very much like sugared almonds and it smells like uh, amaretto, which is that alcoholic liqueur that smells of our taste of almonds, which actually makes a lot of sense because we've got alcohol in here already because that's the base of the perfume. Then we've got the sweetness coming from the benzoin and the vanilla, and then we've actually got the strong almond note itself, which is that benzaldehyde. And they smell very nice together. It does smell like sugared almonds, but it doesn't give me that nice caramel smell that we're looking for in a praline. So it's like this is a good starting point, but it's not quite what we want. Now luckily I did a video the other week on caramel notes and perfumery. So if you go and watch that, you should know by now some different caramel notes that you can use in your perfumes. So two of my favorite ones were caramel acetate and homofuraniol. Now we're gonna go and smell those quick as well. And if you watch that video, you'll know I said that caramel acetate is a really nice caramel smell, whereas homofuraniol for me is a bit more buttery, a bit more like burnt sugar, and that one is actually my favorite. So anyway, if we take these two and then go and add them with the sugared almond smell. So now, it does smell more caramel. Now, when you're doing this with the scent strips, you're obviously only getting a rough idea of what things are going to smell like together, um, but it also gives you an idea of which things will overpower a blend, and it can also alert you to things which may stick out and not quite fit in. Now the next thing I thought is it's very sweet as it stands and I would like a bit more of a nutty element to come through. So I thought let's have a look at what else we could maybe use to go and make that almond note a bit more realistic because at the moment with the benzaldehyde being the only thing to suggest almonds, it's very much a really a sharp, sweet, nutty note and I also know that because benzaldehyde is a top note and it's very much a top note, meaning it really doesn't last long at all, 
when that has gone, it means that our record is just going to go and smell like caramel and vanilla, which is lovely, but we would prefer it if it smelled a little bit more like almonds for a little bit longer. So I went through my notes and I found a couple which are meant to smell like almonds. So one of those is Newsate. I think that's how you say it. I'm not really too sure. And one of them is the quite aptly named Almond Pyrazine. So firstly, let's go to the Newsate. Now this apparently smells a little bit like hazelnuts, but when I went to smell it, I found out that, at least to my nose, it does not smell like hazelnuts. What it smells like to me is actually manzanate mixed with maple lactone. Now, if you don't know what those two smell like, manzanate is a very strong fruity smelling aroma chemical. And when you start to put it in lower concentrations, it actually smells a little bit like apples. It's actually really useful for apple accords. I find it to be a very nice autumnal, apple-y, fruity, almost a little bit cider kind of note. Now, maple lactone, on the other hand, is one of those caramel smelling aroma chemicals, and it's got slight fenugreek notes to it, so kind of, um, well, it's got maple syrup notes to it, but also kind of slight um, spice notes, and it's sweet and caramelic as well. And very strangely, this aroma chemical, to my nose, smells somewhere between the two. And if you actually go and look at its structure, its structure is similar to manzanate, so it does kind of make sense. Now, this is very sweet, and we've already got a lot of sweet things in our composition. And also, it doesn't really smell particularly to me like nuts. I can imagine that maybe a trace amount of this could work well in a nut accord. So if we were going for a really realistic almond accord, we might start to experiment with a little bit of this. But I think this accord is already going to have a fair few ingredients because we're trying to recreate the caramel and the almond elements. So I don't want to overload it with too much stuff. Um, and I don't really want to mess around with this at the moment, especially considering that I think if we go and put any dose more than an absolute trace amount, it's just going to smell worse rather than better. And at that point, then there's a question of if it's even worth adding it. Now, the other thing I've got here is the almond pyrazine. Now, this one is extremely strong and even at 0.1% dilution in alcohol, I can still smell it completely from across the room. Um, this one actually has a nice nutty smell and it doesn't smell exactly like almonds, I would say on its own, but it definitely gives you uh, nutty vibes and compared to the other pyrazines that I've smelled, this one is probably the most uh, almond smelling. It also reminds me of nougat, which has almonds in it quite often. Um, so maybe that's something to do with that. I don't know if they would add this to that or if it smells like that because of the almonds inside of it. Either way, this definitely smells like almonds and I think this is a useful thing for the Accord. So, going to smell all of these things now together. And I definitely think that the almond pyrazine helps it out quite a lot. And it actually does help with the other bits a little bit. With the sweetness, it helps kind of rein it in. But I do feel like actually the benzoin isn't really necessary. If I take out the benzoin and then I smell that on its own, while it's very nice, it's really adding a general sweetness and benzoin is not actually something that's found inside of these pralines. In fact, these other uh, notes are much more likely to be close to what you actually find in a praline. So I think for that reason, there's not really any good reason for us to use benzoin, especially since we've got the caramel notes in there, which are more accurate. It's kind of redundant, so I'm gonna cut that one out. So out of the notes we are left with, I didn't want to go too complicated having two caramel notes to begin with. So I thought I would go for the more pure caramel smelling note, which is a caramel acetate and leave out the homo furanial for now with the thought that, you know, we could always go and add it back in if we want to. Let's not go too complex for our initial blend so we can actually try to understand what's going on. So here I've got then, I've got some vanillin, benzaldehyde, almond pyrazine and caramel acetate. And now what I'm gonna go and do is make the first chord. So for the dosing, this is mainly something I chose based on the relative strengths of the raw materials. So I know that almond pyrazine is extremely strong and benzaldehyde is also very strong, although not quite so much as the almond pyrazine. Now the vanillin and caramel acetate, while they would both be quite strong in a perfume, I really want this formula to have these at the heart of them because I think that's going to be the main base or scaffold for this accord. Of course, when we go to use this in a natural perfume, the accord itself will probably be at a much lower level. So in the end, we shouldn't have too much vanillin, but 
Of course, we need to pick somewhere to start. So for now, what I've decided to do is have vanillin and caramel acetate as equal. And that's mostly because I don't really know which one we want to have stronger. So it's just a first guess. Once I've actually gone and smelled it after having making it, then for the next trial, I can decide if I actually want to make one of them more dominant over the other. And then I decided to try to put the benzaldehyde in at a level which wouldn't be too bad. So it's not too strong and the same for the almond pyrazine. So that's really where the dosing comes in. This first trial, what it's really trying to do is I'm just trying to get the right rough ballpark for the dosage. So I'm really just, I'm just trying to make things kind of where I think it would be balanced so that on the next blend, I can use how it smells to attempt to make something that's actually balanced by tweaking it from here. So you gotta start somewhere. So this is the first version. So I've got this first version of the Accord right here and we're gonna go and smell it. Now, when I smell this version of the Accord, firstly, um, it roughly does the right thing, but I really thought, well, I had a couple of thoughts. One of them is that it's a bit too sweet, I think, and it's not just sweetness from the vanillin, but it's also sweetness from the benzaldehyde. It's just a very strong uh, almondy note. And I actually thought the benzaldehyde was a bit too strong, but also that almond pyrazine, I still get a massive kind of nutty, biscuity smell just you know, fuming out of this scent strip and it's too much because I think you want a little trace of it. You want just enough to give that realistic almond smell, but here it really comes out at you. It makes it actually a little bit biscuity, but in praline, we're not actually meant to have biscuit. We're meant to really more have caramel and almonds. So then for the next trial, what I went and did was I took that benzaldehyde and I took the almond pyrazine and I lowered them down further to what I thought would be a more balanced level. Now, because we're not using too much of these things and they're both top notes, and that means the whole almond element of this accord is represented by a top note, I started thinking, is there anything else we can add to bring almond a bit further into the mid or base? Now, this is a little bit tricky, um, but there are certain things which smell like, especially benzaldehyde, a bit further down in the base note. The one that came to my mind that we could use is something called coumarin. And this is actually quite common in perfumes. It's often used for making hay notes as part of fougere accords and other things. But you can also use it in gourmand notes and it does have a benzaldehyde-like almond note of its own. It's also not quite as strong as benzaldehyde or almond pyrazine, so I thought we can add some of that and actually have it at a little bit of a higher level and see how that goes. Now the other thing is I just thought there was a lot of sweetness in the caramel side of the fragrance. And while I thought the vanillin and caramel acetate both had their place in this accord, I thought maybe it was time to add that homofuraniol because that burned sugar aspect and that buttery aspect of the caramel scent profile that was something I thought this Accord could really benefit from because that should not only make the caramel side of it a bit more 3D, it should also um, help dull down the sweetness. And that occurs by lowering the caramel acetate and vanillin just a little bit to make space for that homo furanio. So here's the second version of the Accord. Now, as soon as I smelled this one, I was pretty happy. And the reason is because, well, immediately when I smelled it, I thought this smells like uh, these almond florentines which are a type of kind of almond caramel biscuit and yeah in my eyes they smell pretty much like what i would expect pralines to smell like so in this version i feel like the benzaldehyde and the almond pyrazine are a lot more balanced they actually feel roughly around the correct levels where i would have thought is right for them and then you can also smell the caramel note is a lot better as well this time, I think the vanillin and the caramel acetate being lower in place of that homofuranial, it just makes the whole thing smell a lot better, especially that homofuranial, those burnt sugar elements to it. It really adds a lot to the caramel. And then actually coumarin, I think blends nicely anyway with vanillin. I did a whole video where I was doing that with my Mexican vanilla accord. Go check that out if you're interested in it. Um, but I really think that that not only blends with the vanillin, but it also contributes in a much more subtle way to that almond smell. And it just adds this nice kind of sparkling sweetness, which ties everything together. Now, because I went and made these two things yesterday, I've actually got some older scent strips from the day before. And what I did find is the first version 
especially after some time, you really smell mostly just the vanillin and the caramel acetate, but you still get quite a bit of a biscuity smell from the almond pyrazine. Now the second version, after a few hours or a bit longer, it actually does smell a lot better, I think, than the first one. And this is because that coumarin really brings a bit more of an almond smell into the mid and base region. And yeah, I just think the balance is a lot better on this one. I think the homo perennial, again, like I said before, it just really helps complete the whole kind of caramelized burn sugar smell. It's not like the whole thing smells of burn sugar, it's just that that caramel becomes a little bit more realistic. It's not so much pure sweetness anymore, but it's got all of the different nuances of caramel that you'd expect. It's got the buttery nuances, the slightly burned caramelized nuances, as well as the kind of caramel sweetness and vanilla sweetness. I assume you probably would go and use some vanilla or vanilla in these uh, little pralines that you make. So yeah, overall this accord is really nice. The only thing that I would maybe say, you know, wasn't quite right is actually I think that coumarin might be a little bit too strong. So I didn't go and make a third iteration, but if I was gonna make a third iteration, then I would pretty much just do the same thing. But I would take that coumarin and I would try cutting it in half or maybe into a third of what it was and seeing how that affected things. Just cause at the moment it comes to a little bit too much and it adds a little bit too much of its own kind of sweetness, which while I think it smells nice and it's fine, I think it distracts a little bit from the realism of the accord because it stands out a little bit. I think it provides a note which I wouldn't actually quite expect to be there, at least so strongly. So then, that's my Praline Accord. Now I'm gonna put the formula up on the screen for you. And I'm actually gonna put a few different formulas. So I'm gonna do one formula in parts per thousand because I know a lot of you guys like to use parts per thousand formulas. So if you are used to those kinds of formulas, then you can use this one. I will also do a formula like the one that I made. So this is pretty much just, if you wanna make a little sample of that accord for yourself to smell. And I expect because it contains a lot of strong sweet notes, you probably would wanna dose it fairly low in your perfumes. So I use absolute concentrations when formulating and I would expect to use this core probably somewhere between about 0.1 and 1% absolute concentration in the perfume. So if you're looking at the concentrate itself, that may be something between one to 10% in your formula. But obviously that depends if you've got a de parfum or a toilette or something else. Now that's just a guess off the top of my head based on, for example, the level of vanillin inside of it. But, you know, I haven't tried it. If you want me to go and try it, making some kind of gourmand perfume, then go leave a load more comments. And if I get enough, I may go and do it, though I'm not too sure. So that was that. And as a final little, uh, note, I will quickly discuss what if you want to make that praline into something more modern with say chocolate, like a chocolate praline, or what if you want to do something else, like a different kind of nut. Now, nut notes in perfumery are often, let's say, obtained by using these different pyrazines. So almond pyrazine was one of them, but there are other pyrazines you can get as well. So if you're interested in those, then check out some different pyrazines and you may be able to fine tune that nut note a little bit more to something else specific. Now, the one note that I found in perfumery that's good for hazelnut is something called filbertone. So that on its own smells like a very nice clean hazelnut smell. Really, I would just say that is all you need for a hazelnut. So if you're interested in making more of a hazelnut praline, then go get some filbertone and add that into this accord. Then on the other hand, if you're looking for something a little bit more chocolate, then you would wanna go out and find a chocolate note to add in. So I did do a video making a chocolate accord a few weeks ago. So if you're interested in that, you could go and make my chocolate accord, make the praline accord, and then mix those two together to make some kind of chocolate praline. Or if you wanted a more realistic chocolate note, then probably the best thing you could go and do is actually go and get some Cocoa Absolute and try mixing in a little bit of that. And you've already got the vanillin. So vanillin is actually something that's often used to make chocolate. That is already inside of this accord. So you could just go and add some actual cocoa notes like Cocoa Absolute, and that should go and blend nicely with the vanillin already inside of the praline accord to go and create the chocolate accord alongside that praline accord in the context that it's already in. So that's it. I hope this video came just in time for awesome. 
and hopefully you can go and make some of your own nice gourmand or praline accords and use them in some of your perfumes. If you find any nice combinations that this accord goes with, please do let me know down in the comments because I will go and try them out for myself. For example, if you come and say, oh, this praline accord, it smells really nice together with say rose or honey or something else like that, then I will go and dip a scent strip into the Praline Accord. And if I have the other thing, I will go and dip one into those and I will try them and I will see what I think of it and hopefully reply to you in the comments. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time with something else.